SpaceX has just conducted a major test, clearly signaling its determination to make heavy spaceflight a reality on its next flight. Today's highlight is Volcancer 2, which had an apparent problem, but unlike SpaceX, the FAA won't be investigating it. Meanwhile, Blue Origin has announced a new spacecraft for the next Shepard mission. Let's kick off the weekend by exploring these updates on today's episode of Anar Studio. Days before the scheduled launch, SpaceX continues to advance preparations for its launch vehicle and systems. After removing the S-30 from B-12, SpaceX is again testing the launch system, specifically the rod. A popular test is done using a giant water bag setup. On the afternoon of October 4th, two orange bags appeared attached to each arm. Each group was given three bags filled with water to simulate the mass of the racket. By the end of the day, each side had two 100-ton bags and one 150-ton bag, bringing the total mass to 500 tons, perfect for testing the effectiveness of the rod in the heavy grip of the Super Booster. When returned for capture, the Super Heavy rung mass was 200 tons, and with some fuel and propulsion remaining, the total mass could approach 500 tons. During the test, Chopstick moved slightly due to the impact, but everything remained stable. This successful test once again demonstrated Chopstick's capabilities. Previously, Chopstick had lifted very heavy objects to unprecedented heights and appeared ready to go, but it will likely undergo additional testing during the waiting period. The latest test once again proved Chopstick's prowess. Previously, SpaceX used the system to lift very heavy objects to unprecedented heights, and while Chopstick appears ready to go, it will likely undergo additional testing during the waiting period. Following this successful test, we can expect the rocket testing process to accelerate. As previously mentioned, the road closure is scheduled for October 7th, 8th, and 9th, although it is not yet certain whether there will be a complete build. However, the rod will likely play a key role and its effectiveness will be further evaluated in due course. SpaceX's ongoing tests reflect its determination to capture excess weight in flight, Hopefully, a positive update on the launch schedule has emerged. The next Starship launch is scheduled for October 13th to 19th, coinciding with the previously announced NOTMAR, or Notice to Mariners. The new document now features the FAA logo, indicating progress in the approval process. So will the FAA allow Flight 5 to take off on schedule? It is entirely possible, as the NOTMAR was properly evaluated before it was announced to avoid disrupting naval operations. If so, that would be great news. However, I think this is unlikely. Despite the optimism, the FAA has not made any significant changes after receiving much criticism. Additionally, SpaceX's continued commitment to landing the super heavyweight continues to be a bone of contention with the FAA, which could lead to further delays. While the latest developments are encouraging, we may still expect the launch to be in late November. What do you think? Could Starship Flight 5 launch earlier? Share your predictions in the comments section below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date on SpaceX's journey. And with that, we conclude our SpaceX updates and move on to ULA Vulcan Cert 2 flight updates. At 7.25 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on October 4, ULA successfully launched its second Vulcan Centaur mission, known as Cert 2. The flight was critical to obtaining a National Security Launch Certificate from the U.S. Space Force. Originally scheduled for 6 a.m., the launch was delayed due to a data system issue, as Tori Bruno explains. Powered by two BE-4 engines and two powerful boosters, the rocket lifted off with an impressive 2 million pounds of thrust. However, this flight appeared to be more intense than the first, with the combination of the delayed departure and the flight itself causing concern. Then, boom! An explosion occurred about 37 seconds after liftoff, apparently originating from one of the power plants. Debris was seen flying near the rocket, likely a piece of propellant that failed to function. Despite the explosion, the Vulcan Centauri continued onward. The two stages separated, and the Centauri second stage continued to rise, apparently functioning as expected. The incident is still under investigation by ULA's team, but Tori Bruno provided an initial explanation. Yes, it sounds dramatic like everything that happens in a missile, but it was just a launch. No explosions occurred. However, the engine smoke changed and the main stage solid fuel separation occurred 20 seconds later than expected. The problem appears to be with the motor nozzle, 
possibly due to a leak or the motor not being able to withstand the heat and pressure causing the failure. Of course, this is speculation, and we will have to wait for official confirmation from ULA. Now, the question on everyone's mind is how the FAA will react. If this were SpaceX, there would probably be an investigation underway. But with ULA, there is no investigation. First, the FAA issued a statement. The FAA is aware of an anomaly that occurred during the Alliance Launch Unit Vulcan mission, the Centaur, two mission that launched from Cape Canaveral Space Station in Florida on October 4th, 2024. It involved one of the dust boosters. No injuries to the public or damage to public property were reported. The FAA will evaluate the operation and issue an updated statement if the HC determines that an investigation is warranted. As soon as the FAA cleared the ULA, the FAA evaluated the operation and determined that no investigation was warranted at this time. So it appears that Vulcan has completed its flight and can proceed with planning for its next mission, but this seems to be a clear bias. When a Falcon 9 has a second stage issue or landing attempt that does not pose a safety issue, the rocket is still grounded for investigation. So what about this double standard? Back to ULA, after completing this mission, they will likely receive their USF Homeland Security Launch Certification, which is a significant accomplishment. But this success is just the beginning, as there are still many challenges ahead. In the remaining months of this year, ULA is executing two critical missions under the Phase II and SSL contracts. Delays in these missions have led to sanctions from the Pentagon, putting the company under extra pressure to deliver. Beyond these immediate challenges, ULA faces the daunting task of executing more than 20 Phase II missions over the next two years. The sheer volume of work combined with tight deadlines presents a serious test of both Vulcan's capabilities and ULA's operational efficiency. Adding to the complexity, ULA has been selected for Phase III of the NSSL contract, further increasing its responsibilities in the near term. With such a heavy workload, there is no certainty that Vulcan, at its current pace, can meet these demands while maintaining the reliability and accuracy required for national security launches. As ULA navigates these challenges, the pressure is on for the Vulcan rocket to prove itself, not only through successful flights, but also through its ability to meet the tight deadlines and high expectations that come with these major defense contracts. All eyes will be on ULA to see how it handles this monumental task and whether it can survive in this highly competitive sector. Next, we get an update from Blue Origin on the real-world preparations for the new Shepard mission. Blue Origin is currently preparing for its next mission, NS-27, which is scheduled for October, 7 at 9 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The mission will primarily feature a new spacecraft. As a test flight, it will be uncrewed. NS-27 will mark the debut of the second new Shepard human vehicle, consisting of a first stage called Booster 5 and a crew capsule called RSS Carmen Line. Blue Origin says the vehicle features technology enhancements to improve performance and reusability, as well as an updated library and booster payload bay. And without a pilot, the mission will carry 12 research payloads, five on the booster and seven on the capsule. This includes a new navigation system developed for Blue Origin's new Shepard and Glenn rockets, as well as two light and beam sensing LIDAR sensors designed to operate in the lunar environment. Blue Origin has high expectations for its latest upgrades. The company says its second human-powered spacecraft will allow for increased flight capacity to better meet growing customer demand. While this sounds promising, the true performance of the new spacecraft will only be clear after crewed missions. The company has only manufactured four boosters for the new Shepard system, but three of them have been decommissioned, lost, or experienced technical issues. Since the incident in late 2022, Blue Origin has been flying missions with one operational booster. If he suffers another stroke, he risks returning to the precarious situation that saw his suborbital program stalled. That raises concerns about the company's ability to remain competitive in an increasingly crowded suborbital market where competitors are rapidly advancing their technology. While the new spacecraft may offer more advanced capabilities, it may not solve the company's reliance on a limited booster fleet. Without better preparation and hardware redundancy, Blue Origin could lose market share to other suborbital companies looking to exploit its weaknesses. For now, all eyes are on the future NS-27 flight with the new spacecraft. 
It will be important to see how these upgrades work in real-world conditions. The success of this mission could determine whether Blue Origin can maintain its position in the suborbital space race or fall behind its competitors. While folks tune in for today's episode, see you next time.